Is on? Yeah. <sighs> hello, hello. Yep. Greetings, everyone, and welcome to PCE. So I'm John Hardwick, um, uh, we're going to get started now. So uh, we'll go quickly first through um, the usual administrative notices and we'll talk about working group status. Then we have uh, several drafts on the agenda, both working group drafts and, and new drafts for us to discuss. Um, let's begin with a note well. Um, hopefully everyone has familiarized themselves with the Noel 
before, but in case not, please do read this um, if you're considering participating during the meeting. It covers your rights and responsibilities as an IETF participant. I've passed around the blue sheets. Please sign the blue sheets with your name. Um, we have a minute taker. Drew's going to take the minutes. Do we have anyone um, here who could be a Jabba scribe? Any volunteers? Anyone on Jabba? All right. So I'm, I'm also logged into Jabber, uh, Drew's logged into Jabber. If anyone types a question into Jabber, surely one of us will, will see that. Um, <clears throat> so uh, as usual, um, this meeting is not just in this room. We are streaming live and direct to the internet. Um, we have some participants on Meet Echo, uh, some of whom are not even here. Uh, so when you are speaking, please speak only using the microphone. Please state your name before you speak for the benefit of a minute taker and anyone listening in. If you're presenting, um, please try to st not to stray from outside this pink box on the floor so that the, the cameras uh, can continue to see you. Um, just to note, my co-chair, Julianne, um, unfortunately isn't here. He had to stay in France. I think they're all still celebrating the World Cup. Um, Julianne is here um, in spirit, if not in body, because he's, he's on the Mead Echo, so um, he will be listening to, to what happens. Um, the, the usual reminder to use the mailing list. Sometimes the mailing list goes quiet. Sometimes um, things happen uh, to drafts, which in hindsight we, we couldn't understand because uh, nothing got discussed on the list beforehand. So please use the list. Um, raise any issues, ask any questions, that's what it's there for. If you're unsure about anything or you need to clear anything up, then please use the list um, and uh, that would be great, thanks. Here's our agenda. I believe everyone who wanted a, a slot this time has managed to get a slot, so that should be good. Um, does anyone want to bash our agenda? I think that's a no. Okay, so I'll move on to the status of our working group drafts. So we'll start with those that have actually moved beyond the working group. So sadly, no new RFCs since London, but um, we are making uh, some good progress. We have one sitting in the RFC editor queue. This is for the LSP setup type generalization. Uh, this is a, a prerequisite for segment routing. Um, we had quite a few issues raised by the IESG during last call, um, and uh, we had to address quite a few of those. Um, but we finally got that done. Uh, now we are just sitting in Auth 48, uh, where authors have 48 hours to respond to the RFC editor. I think we're still about three weeks into that process now. Um, three authors have replied, two authors have not. Um, so. It would be marvelous if those two authors could please reply um, and then we can move that one forward. Uh, besides that, we have early code point allocations for the stateful PC point to multi point draft uh, and also for the segment routing draft. More on that in just a second. Um, some errata were raised for some of our already published RFCs. Um, I think these all amounted to editorial clarifications. All of the errata were accepted. Um, on, on our base PCEP RFC 5440, we updated a, a reference. In RFC 8231, we, we corrected a typo there, and we corrected a typo in 8233 as well. Draft still in the working group. Um, Quite a few are uh, past working group last call and are sort of waiting for the next step. So we, we have three there where working group last call's finished uh, and they are pending an update. There's inter area AS applicability, GMPLS PSEP extensions, and um, 
actually, I think the third bullet there, WWSON RWA extension, um, that's not waiting for an update. That's actually waiting for the GMPLSP set extensions updates to uh, to be done. Uh, if anyone here want to talk about either inter-area AS applicability or GMPLSP set extensions, Daniel. Hello, yes, Daniel King. So uh, first, kind of a mere culpa, I think, for into area AS applicability because it's it's I think years now since you might have done a review it feels like um, very long time actually but there were a number of good comments and we didn't actually update the documents it's at least a year I think um, I'm wondering is the document even useful anymore now that DepNet's going to solve all sort of internet connectivity problems um, that aside um, could we get some kind of survey from the room to see if the authors should update the document because it, it was a, a you had a significant I number think of there, were, there were significant editorial comments uh, in terms of improving the document as a document um, and I think the the major problem was because it was such a, a venerable document it didn't include anything on staple PCE yeah. and I think you exactly. know the question is, is, it, is, is this a useful document to write and should we, you know, because it's going to take some work to do those editorial changes and to add a staple PC, which I think we probably exactly. should do. Exactly. And I'm not, it, wants to proceed. although I am inherent, inherent, inherently lazy, yes, that's, that's <laughs> what I was trying to get to, um, I don't mind taking the lead and then having the co-authors review and, and see if I can delegate some of those new sections. It, it's just a significant task, uh, and I just want to know if it's really worthwhile and if it's going to be a useful document. So, um, if you're here in the room, please could you raise your hands if you think it is worthwhile to have a document discussing the applicability of PCE to inter-area or inter-AS routing? So, I, <laughs> I counted four. I counted four. So, so I think that there is non-negligible interest. Mm. Um, I wouldn't say there's an overwhelming avalanche of people clamoring for it to, to go ahead. At so, least there is interest. I think that's good enough for me. At least there is some yeah. interest. It yeah, sounds yeah, like yeah, if, yeah. If, some, if work was done, then some people would care. And At least someone will read it. it. And yeah. now I know who's going to review the next version. So, yeah. uh, I, I can take yeah I can take that and move forward. <clears throat> uh, Deborah, and if I can remind you all, this was a milestone on your charter in 2013. Do we need AD approval to drop milestones from the charter? That's I just for adding, isn't it? I, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure, but let's 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 figure that out if we if we need to. Right. Yeah. Um, yes, um, I think. Um, uh, I'm the author of WSAN RWA extension, waiting for uh, GMPLS PSAP extensions uh, Shepherd review. Thanks to um, um, Julian, he provided um, uh, Shepherd review comment to Cyril. And uh, I talked to Cyril and he said he, he has time to update, but I haven't seen any update. Uh, so, but uh, if he ha doesn't have time, I might help him to um, reply to uh, Julian's comment. But I have another question is uh, WSAN, RWA, and also staple PC, GMPLS. Um, can you make uh, Shepard review, you know, being progress in parallel, instead of wait, just waiting for the previous one to be completed because it takes some effort, right? Uh, yes, and, and I think we have done that for WSAN, RWA, because Danielle did a, a Shepard review of that already. So I think oh, it's done? Okay. Yeah, it's already done. The, the changes are already made. Oh, okay, you're just you. Okay, now I'm sorry. Yeah, I was yeah. um, completely <laughs> forgotten yeah. about that because it's been a while. Sure. Okay. All right. Okay. So we should chase Cyril to, to okay. get those updates made. Uh, so we, we have a, a queue for working group last call. Um, and now here's my mayor culpa for not having last called more of them in, in the, the last period. I'm sorry about that. Um, 
we are a little bit struggling for bandwidth for shepherds. So if if anyone out there is interested in being a shepherd, um, then please talk to me offline. I'd very be very grateful for the help if you could just you know devote a few hours to reviewing one of these drafts and helping it through the ISG process. That that would help us clear the queue a lot faster than it's currently being queued. Um, in the meantime. That's the, the queue for last call is a hierarchy extension, stateful PC auto bandwidth, stateful PC point to multi point, ACTN applicability, stateful PC GMPLS, stateful hierarchical PCE. Um, that's basically the order I expect to do them in. So, assuming I have shepherds available and I can shepherd some of those, I can't do them all, um, then we'll aim to last call them all in that order. And I would hope that we would do that before uh, we go to Thailand in November. Okay, so uh, working group drafts not on the agenda for this time. Um, does anyone in the room have anything to say about these? Uh, any authors want to give us a, a quick status update or shall we just assume that they are static? Mm -hmm. Hi, Dhruv from uh, Huawei. So uh, let me pick a few. Uh, PCEP Yang, uh, we did the update uh, recently, uh, added more examples, cleared some ID nits, uh, made sure that some examples have IPv6 and other things that usually blocks us. I think now would be the good time for Yang Doctor review, especially when the T topology and uh, those things are moving along. So uh, it would be really good if the chairs can request for Yang Doctor review. Agreed. Okay. Uh, apart from that, I think the rest uh, that I'm uh, I'm editor of are moving pretty well. I don't see any open issues uh, listed on the list or by offline by any anyone in the working group. So if you care about these documents, please read, please comment, uh, find me or any other authors for uh, LSP control for. Flow spec for enhanced errors, enhanced errors anywhere. Why Moon will cover uh, LSP scheduling, etc. Associations I will anyway talk about in the next session. Okay. How uh, may Huawei regarding the draft about the enhanced errors? Actually, uh, we did receive some uh, comments offline, and. Uh, I, I have to work the, only by myself because I, I didn't I failed to connect with other causes because the draft has been quite a long time and uh, my understanding is uh, after my next update uh, after this meeting the I think the draft will be ready for the last call. Okay, thanks. It's Adrian Farrell. Um, the flow spec work is rumbling along quite nicely. Um, we're sort of pushing the implementation side of it now. Uh, the only thing that's really sticking in my head is to what extent this should harmonize with the uh, SRT policy uh, work, because they are, in a sense, similar uh, describing what traffic should go on what path. Uh, I'd like opinions. Thanks, Adrian. I think I think that question was asked last time as well. Um, I haven't yet got an opinion on, on that personally, but if there are any SRTE authors in the room, then please step forward and, and give us your opinion. Otherwise, I think we, we need to look at that as, uh, as the draft progresses. Okay, so two documents are expired, but we already covered them. They're just waiting for updates. And that's, that's the working group status done. Any questions or comments? Okay. So the first presenter will be Drew.
Hello, I'm Dhruv. Uh, I'll be talking about all the set of documents that we have uh, regarding the PCEP association. And uh, let's go. This is our association landscape. Uh, you have the base association group draft, which describes the association object. And then we have these bunch of other documents that creates different types of associations. Uh, we, on the left, you have four working group documents dealing with diversity, policy, protection, and bi-directional uh, association. Uh, you have some uh, other individual documents which are currently on agenda separately. So I'll not go in uh, depth for that. They have uh, time on the agenda, which is the VN association and the bi-directional association for SRTE. Uh, apart from that, there are some individual IDs uh, still dealing with uh, resource sharing and uh, make before break, as well as a new document published for uh, segment routing, uh, how the candidate paths can be associated into an SRTE policy. So this is just a 00 version recently posted. It's right now not on the agenda separately. So this is uh, where we are. So as you can see, there are a bunch of documents dealing with association. Uh, with the base association, uh, we already did working group last call. There was one substantial comment pending from Cyril, which is regarding adding the capability advertisement uh, for various associations that are supported. Uh, we kind of discussed uh, uh, that how to handle it in a backward compatible way for the things which are already deployed versus something that could be useful for various different associations that are being described anyway. So we came up with uh, this approach that we will have uh, association type list uh, similar to how we do OF list in an open message. That way you can advertise that these are the type of associations that I support. Uh, but we kind of made this as an optional thing. And each association type uh, document would mandate or decide that for this type, for, for example, the policy can say that for policy, you must uh, must do discovery and it should be there in the open message before use, but some other ones could make it optional. So it could be decided by the each individual ID how to handle the uh, association discovery part. Uh, so basically, this was the only thing pending. I think uh, now we are ready for the next step. And anyway, we discussed that that's what the chairs wants to do uh, as well. Uh, now, the requirements for any of the documents that uh, specify a new association type, uh, they need to clearly state whether they think that the advertisement during open message should be mandatory or not. So uh, that's a requirement on them. and. Uh, also, if you remember, uh, in the association draft, we have two types, whether it is a dynamic association or operator configured association or an association type that could be both. So this is a requirement that any association should clearly state that what type they belong to. And if there is especially the uh, issue of association range handling, that needs to be clearly stated. So this is a, uh, that's why I'm covering them together so that anybody who is thinking of this work, please do take care of. Uh, uh, these things as well in your document. So uh, let's go through uh, the updates that we have done to the working group documents. Uh, the updates have been pretty small because most of the contents have been uh, stable. Main changes have been because of the recent change in the association group draft. So uh, for diversity, uh, we kind of made the capability advertisement as mandatory. This one is clearly stated as both dynamic and operator configured. That What that means is that this diversity association can be created dynamically by a PCEP speaker based on some configuration on the tunnel, for instance. Or uh, it could also be operator, operator, operator configured, especially in cases where you have the two LSPs starting from a different head nodes. And it is explicitly configured by operator that these two LSPs needs to be diverse from each other and uh, other smaller changes. So that was all about diversity. With respect to policy, same changes again, uh, capability advertisement and a clear description about policy is always an operator configured association. Next, uh, for path protection, this was recently uh, adopted after the last, uh, uh, last ITF. So here also we made two updates. Uh, one is capability advertisement mentioning that this is dynamic. And one requirement that uh, came in that to clearly state what is the protection type. So for this uh, thing, we added a protection type field. And the 
the handling is as per RFC 4872. So same bits and same description as described in 4872 has been added. So now you can tell what type of protection uh, is this when you create this association. Uh, regarding bi-directional uh, uh, draft, Rakesh uh, made the update and uh, he added uh, some more descriptions based on whatever feedback that he got during the working group adoption call and uh, which dealt with adding more figures and descriptions, especially because he describes two type of initiation mechanism, whether it is a single single sided bidirectional association and double sided bidirectional association. So he has added uh, those descriptions and some error handling. So that covers the status of all the working group documents. Now, uh, some uh, other uh, documents, I just wanted to give an update to the working group that what people are working on. So please give comments to these uh, on the list. And uh, later we can think about how to uh, get them adopted as well. So one is resource sharing. Currently there is no update to this document, but I think an update should be coming based on whatever we discussed regarding making the, how to handle the capability advertisement and other things as well. Uh, there is an, a document, this is pretty old, uh, about explicit make before break and uh, an association object. Earlier this was being done in a non-association way, so the authors had changed and used an association type and that mechanism to do explicit make before break. And apart from that, it, there has not been any big change, but I think the document is technically up to date and uh, it's fine. The, the last one is the new document. Uh, this document describes that if a SRT policy has been created and you have a set of candidate paths, how do you associate those candidate paths into an SRT policy? So uh, good that we got some comments on this uh, yesterday on the mailing list. So we will be working with the authors and trying to resolve this pretty soon and come up with a new version as well. Okay, so I think the main... Uh, uh, main thing is, uh, that we have to do is get the association group document out of the way and uh, that's already happening, which is good. And then we can decide the or order in which we want to handle each of the various association types document in the working group. So please review and especially for all the other association types, we need to make sure that uh, all the changes that we make in are aligned to each other because these all documents are very closely related to each other. That's it from my side. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Rud. Our next speaker is John. Um, here, uh, I'd like to uh, give the status, um, the update on uh, three uh, drafts, um, hierarchical PCE and stateful hierarchical PCE and um, applicability of PCE to ACTN. Um, so I'm not the author of PCE hierarchy, but I think Drew took the action to update this document and I believe Drew is not also the author, but um, um, he uh, basically up to date um, um, to align with other uh, progress, uh, especially since 101 ETF meeting, um, he updated to include domain diversity requirement uh, to indicate uh, what is the domain ID for exiting domain and so on. Um, and this update include um, referenced right references and uh, correcting some reference and section numbers and um, just to make it ready for working group last call. Uh, so I think the authors believe uh, this is ready for working group last call. Yeah, so thank you. Okay. Um, so I can, so next one is um, uh, we apply stateful uh, HP, um, PC to hierarchy. Uh, this was presented in 101 and uh, we, we basically update how reoptimization is handled and clarify uh, P LSP ID uh, and speak identity TLD using report message from child to parents. Um, basically to be aligned with um, other draft mentioned here. 
And also, uh, this one is also ready for the working of last call. That's in the queue, right? It's in the queue, too. Okay. Queue right. is long. Okay, the queue is long. Okay, so I don't have to go through. Yeah. And PC applicability ACTN um, also presented last um, IETF. Uh, basically aligned with the uh, uh, ACTN uh, framework, which now is um, you know, RFC EQ. Uh, during IESG uh, reviews, there were some changes, so we tried to align with that. And uh, we actually think that this is also a working group last call already. It's also in the queue. Okay. We need then, shepherds. Okay. Yeah. Then, yeah, this is a recap. Um, thank you. Thanks, Jim. Okay, so uh, the next uh, section is to discuss some new work on PC as a central controller. Um, Drew, are you, are you doing this? Okay. Hi, uh, this is Truv again, and uh, we'll be talking about PCCC extensions. So these documents have been around for a while, but they have gone through a major update this time. So that's why I've asked the chairs for a little longer time to go over these documents a little bit more in detail. So a little bit history. Uh, we already have RFC 8283 published. So we have the PC, uh, PC as a central controller architecture and framework published. Uh, this describes uh, the motivation, the applicability of both PC as a controller and a PCEP as a interface between the controller and a node and all the different processing, what, what kind of applicability, what, uh, what kind of scalability and other considerations that we need to take if we use PC as a central controller and kind uh, and update PCEP protocol uh, for this purpose. And during the last discussion in the meeting, uh, we had the agreement within the working group that yes, we are going in this direction anyways, and uh, uh, let's get with get on with the uh, actual protocol work and the solution work. And that's why I, that's what I'm here for. Okay, so let's have a, a quick uh, a description. Uh, so basically we have two documents. The first documents describes what we call as a basic mode, and the other documents talks about the segment routing. Uh, but both documents are quite well aligned. They use the same extension and the same objects and same mechanisms as much as possible. Uh, in the basic mode, as described uh, in the RFC, uh, this mode is nothing but a static LSP configuration. You have a controller. Uh, he calculates the path. Once the path calculation is done, along the path, he instructs the node to take uh, uh, forwarding actions. So what we call uh, uh, these forwarding actions are nothing but central controller instructions. And we have kept the name a little bit generic for the reason that uh, uh, this central controller instructions could be mean to do multiple things. For example, uh, it in this case, is just an MPLS label download. It could also be SRSID, uh, SRV6. So multiple things are happening. So keeping it generic as a central controller instructions is uh, quite useful. Uh, but in this mode, uh, we have uh, described about MPLS label only. So uh, the, uh, once the LSP, uh, once the labels are provisioned along the path, it's same. Uh, you have uh, for this LSP, this is your out label. Uh, this is the in label on the transit node. And this is your out label. This is your next hop. All that information will be uh, pushed from the controller right to the device, just like any other SBI uh, SDN SBI kind of protocol. Uh, it, this will change things that like you have a PCEP session across all the nodes along the path and you are using that session uh, to download information. Uh, so that's the, basically uh, what PCCC is. It's not rocket science, it's pretty straightforward. So how do we do this via PCEP? Uh, first thing that we need is we need a new path setup type. The, Good that we have that already. We will define a new path setup type that this will be PCCC. So you get, let's start an ingress sensor report message says that this is a PCCC LSP and uh, I'm delegating it to you, handle it. So PC will calculate the path, but once the path is calculated along the nodes uh, of the path, 
it must send uh, the controller instructions. In the older uh, version of this document, we were thinking of creating new messages, but we got the feedback, we listened to the feedback, and we kind of think that it is actually nothing but an initiate message, but with a new object, uh, which is the CCID, which is the central controller instruction. So you identify that for this particular LSP, uh, I am downloading this instruction uh, on this device. And of course, we start with egress, then transit, uh, then ingress, all the labels are downloaded along. So this central controller instruction could include just the out label, in label and out label, just the in label, any combination is possible. And that would be supported and identified by a unique uh, ID. Once the labels are all downloaded, uh, we update to the ingress. Oh, by the way, your LSP is up. Labels are downloaded. You can start sending the traffic. Pretty straightforward. So that's what's happening. So your basic report update message from ingress, they don't change much. They, uh, they remain the same. Only thing is they have a path setup type that clearly tell that the setup type is PCCC. Uh, the other thing that would be ch changing is these initiate message going through all the nodes along the path and downloading whatever is the label instructions that is needed. For PC initiate, not much changes again. The only difference would be that you, when you initiate uh, to the uh, to the PCE, uh, that I I intend to create uh, a PCCC LSP and get the LSP ID and other things from it. The main reason that we are doing that is so that we can get those identifiers because we want to put the same identifiers later on when we are downloading uh, the instructions, this thing. This is only done for manageability reasons so that we can equate, oh, this central in instructions was actually done for this particular uh, LSP. So that helps us with uh, figuring things out. Rest of the things kind of remains the same and you have uh, the R flag for cleanup if you want to ever remove it. Is it a clarification question? Yes. Or? Okay, go ahead. Um, Igor Bruskin, Huawei. Um, the instructions they sent uh, sequentially or in parallel? Yeah, parallel. Parallel. But, so and how the control was synchronized, basically it waits from the slowest? Uh, usually it's up to you, but uh, the, the one that we usually follow is start from the end towards the uh, front. And then you good thing is we have report messages anyway to clearly say that, oh, I have a feedback, an acknowledgement coming from uh, all the devices that yes, the labels have been downloaded. So I am pretty sure that I can now send the traffic. And uh, what if uh, some of them uh, report error and others report success? I will recompute. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Andrew Stone from Nokia. The PLSP ID being associated to the transit, is that an optional characteristic of this or is it a mandatory characteristic? Right now, it's mandatory. So in the case of PCECC, obviously, it's a generic for any type of labeling that you want to use. But if you're using with SRTE, it kind of defeats the purpose of uh, using it with SRTE. And that's why I will talk about this a little later. And that will be the, this is the uh, basic mode. When I have the SR mode, I will. So that's why the CCI object, we kept it generic. And it uh, LSP is mandatory only in this mode. OK. So now let's talk about what if I, I need to make a change into my LSP? What will be my make before break procedure in this mode? Well, uh, because you are changing the path, you must have new set of labels for that path. You first do that operation. Go ahead and download new set of labels uh, along the path, uh, whether it's the same nodes or different nodes, it doesn't matter. But you do this operation first. Once that operation is over, you send an update message to the ingress asking him, Oh, by the way, now uh, you have a new path. So we will still tell him the path. He will not do anything with it. That ERO, he will kind of, it's only for his uh, information. He doesn't have to do anything. The labels are anyway downloaded. All he has to do is switch the traffic to the whatever is the new label, uh, new out label that he has uh, at the ingress. So once he has done that and we have a report message that yes, everything is fine, then we can go about deleting all the old labels that we had along the path. Pretty standard uh, procedure, uh, nothing majorly new here as well. But we will do make before break procedure, especially for uh, this mode. And as because you would need new set of labels, you need to make sure that those labels are downloaded. Then you move the traffic uh, on the new path and then go about deleting the labels from before. Uh, <clears throat> sorry, can I have another clarification question? 
Um, uh, <coughs> what exactly you're making uh, in this case? So basically, is it uh, just a detour or it's uh, the new path uh, end to end? If you new would, path. Huh? New path. The entire path. The entire path. So why do you need the entire path? Uh, you, you need it for RSVP because in RSVP you can do only end-to-end -end signaling, right? But in this case, you you just can do the detour and and then just swap uh, the detour with. Yes. The, uh, yes. Uh, basically, we will not differentiate them. For us, it's a path modification. Now, in this path modification, if there is a cases that I don't have to change all the labels and I only have to change a few, yeah, it's allowed. Doesn't matter. The procedure will remain the same. Right, so it's path modification, it's not, but it's not made before break. That's all I'm saying. Okay, we'll talk about the terminology part. I know this works. Let's fix the terminology in the document. I'll discuss with you. Okay, okay moving on. Uh, now we'll come to the segment routing part. So what is happening in segment routing is that we are using, uh, we already have PC for segment routing where the label stack can be calculated by a PCE and push to the ingress. So what's new here? The, the new part is even the SR SID assignment can also be done by the controller. And this is also discussed uh, in the RFC uh, uh, in the T's working group. So basically uh, the SID allocation can be done by PCE and pushed to all the nodes in the network or the nodes that actually needs it in whichever way that can be uh, uh, figured out by the PCECC. So uh, what kind of, uh, what must happen? That there must be uh, some label space clearly allocated to PCE. So the PCE will make this allocation. So uh, that needs to be done. And then from that, the node SID or uh, prefix SID or adjacency SID can be allocated by PCE and pushed onto the device. The rest of the uh, procedure to talking to the ingress doesn't change. You just pre prepare the label stack, give it to the ingress, and the rest of the segment routing works without any change. Uh, th there would be a few things that we need to take care of, uh, things like uh, uh, identifying clearly what the node is. So for that purpose, a PCEP speaker, currently uh, in PCEP, we simply use whatever is the TCP IP address to figure out uh, how do we reach the PCC or identify a PCC. So we wanted to make that very clear that uh, uh, it's, it should be better if the node ID used in traffic engineering is advertised at the time when the session is uh, getting formed from a PC so, so that I can map them very clearly. So that's something that we have uh, uh, added in the document as well. Uh, so what happens uh, and what are the new things that you need? Uh, first, no LSP in this case. We have a new object which we call FEC, which kind of uh, describe Basically, what is this central SR's CCID belongs to? So in this case, since it's about uh, downloading node information, your FEC is points to the node ID and uh, all the details related to that. So basically, think of this as a simple uh, node distribution via IGP. Things remain exactly the same. Only difference is it is the PCE that's allocating the SID and talking to all the nodes and downloading that information. But what should be the what should be actually downloaded onto the device? That's still done by the node, especially then how how to figure out what the next stop should be. That depends on the IGP information uh, running in your node, and based on just the SID and the uh, and the FEC is coming from the controller. Uh, clarification? Or? Uh, yeah, just to clear Andrew from Nokia, just a clarification for the previous slide about doing the correlation of the TCP session to the router ID. That's being embedded in this draft. Would it make sense to ex export that into its own standalone draft? So that way for all PCEP integration, you can correlate the PCEP session to what's been advertised into the TED? We can talk about it. Okay. Uh, so, uh, now for adjacency, not much change here. Only difference is you have a different FEC, which kind of identifies both uh, the, both the endpoints of that adjacency, but rest of the procedure kind of remains the same. And then, uh, okay, let's move on. So uh, these are some of the common procedures, irrespective of whether we do basic mode or SR, we need to worry about what if PC goes down? What if there's a session down? How do I handle this? When would I clean up the instructions that I've received from PCE? Most of the things we are piggybacking on the uh, the mechanism that we have for LSP anyway. So not much difference whether it is an LSP cleanup or it is a CC 
central controller instructions cleanup. We rely on the same procedure that we already put in, in our stateful PC drafts. So using an initiate message instead of uh, putting a new message also helped us with this procedure quite a bit. That now we can piggyback on the state timeout interval on all the procedures that we already have clearly listed out in RFC 8231. And we don't differentiate too much, whether it is uh, uh, SR LSP or RSVPT LSP, the way we clean up LSP state on the device, it's the same way we can clean up the central, construct, central control instructions. Now, we also need to worry about who uh, the delegation procedure a little bit. That is, if the PCE that censors this instruction, if that, P, if that uh, PCE is no longer there, what do we do with this? Is there a way, as the LSP gets redelegated to a new PCE, the central controller instructions which were used for that LSP also needs to move along with that. So in the document, we have kind of explained the procedure for that. Uh, this is, yeah. Excuse me, uh, Huawei. Uh, actually, I didn't uh, review very carefully on this kind of redelegation part, but I would like to extend a little bit because uh, PCE is, uh, actually covers a larger scope than the RSVPS. Uh, it has its uh, own a uh, range of nodes and corresponding RSPs. So I'm wondering, besides the case that one PC comes shut down or or other kind of failure stuff, is it possible to also consider the overloading of one single PC and so that some of the RSPs or node can come over to another uh, PC, uh, PC's domain? Have you already covered that? Or? No. I think uh, we have covered what we do it for uh, normal stateful LSPs. So okay. I, I think there is an overload mechanism even in 8231. So we are piggybacking on that. We are not describing anything new. But we can discuss if there is a need, need for something new to be added. Okay, I, will I can it. discuss. Absolutely. Um, Igor Briskin, just one more comment. Uh, when a uh, failure happens on the network, uh, sometimes it requires to reroute uh, numerous OSPs, right? So uh, the vertical signaling, the way you describe, could, could in theory take uh, advantage uh, by provisioning, reprovisioning multiple OSPs at the same time by combining the instructions sent to the same node with respect yes. to all LSPs. Have you considered that? Yes, yes. Okay. A uh, good thing is initiate message allows you to club a lot of things together, so we can definitely do that. So uh, next is the synchronization part. So if the our session temporarily goes down, what will we do? Again, LSP state synchronization mechanism helps us quite well here. Uh, so uh, we don't differentiate too much. These are just CCI. When the session comes up during the LSP DB synchronization state, we also synchronize all the central controller instructions that we have received. The difference would be that in case of, uh, uh, in case of LSP, it is the PCC that uh, sends uh, all the LSPs that it has, and the PCE takes the action. In this case also, we want to do the same thing. We say that PCC will report, these are all the central controller instructions that you gave me before you went down. Now, tell me what do I need to do? Uh, is there any change? So it's the job of the PCE to maybe use initiate message to remove some, add some, and handle, uh, hand, uh, and handle it. So kind of very similar to PC initiated LSP, just think of if a PC initiated LSPs were sent from a stateful PC to a node and, the, and their session goes down, whatever things that the PCC has to do uh, for state uh, PC initiated LSP, the same thing it needs to do for central controller instructions. Because at the end, that's what it, uh, it is. It's just a, a one hop LSP as, as we were discussing earlier. Uh, we have lots of uh, uh, optimizations that we did for LSP state synchronization. All of them, RFC 8233, and as well as there is a, a document uh, that we presented the last time, which is uh, about uh, state synchronization across PCEs. All of them continue to work with PCCC mode as well. So which is a good thing that we don't need brand new procedure. We can piggyback on things that's already are there. Uh, of course, to support this, we need to do capability advertisement. So we will have a capability TLV, uh, and we follow the same uh, same changes that we did to path setup type and make it a sub TLV to the uh, to the capability TLVs, etc. And S bit is for PCCC, uh, a PCCC SR mode, and the basic is for PCCC. Uh, the changes to PCEP message, uh, basically inside your PC initiated message, you added 
a central control. This central control uh, would have two modes. One is with LSP, which is the basic mode, and one is FEC, which is for, uh, for the uh, SR mode. And uh, we would have CCI list, especially in case when you need to download multiple labels, you could use the CCI list as well. Uh, so this is for initiate message, and this is for report message. The report message helps us both to acknowledge what is uh, the controller asking us to do, as well as during state synchronization when I need to report or what, what are the set of central controller instructions that I received earlier. So that's why we modify both initiate message and the report message. This is what the CCI object looks like. Uh, it has a type one for basic MPLS label and type two, which matches closely to how the SR SID descriptions that's there in the IGP drafts. So you will see things like MTID algorithm and all the flags uh, that are associated with any SR SID and that's where what we have here. But this is a simple case where only we talk in terms of MPLS label. Okay, and this is uh, the FEC object. Uh, as we know that there, the FEC could be for multiple cases for IPv4 node ID, IPv6 node ID, uh, adjacencies, unnumbered adjacencies, and like you know, there are new extensions for path, which uh, Cheng Li will also uh, cover in his talk. So these will all be basically what are the different SR FEC for which I am. Uh, creating this SID. OK, so, uh, so uh, what we have done, as if you will do a history, the draft has changed quite a bit based on the comments that Adrian gave, John gave, that uh, try to reuse, which has actually helped us quite a bit. So uh, thank you for that. And uh, uh, now, uh, we, though we had an implementation on the older versions, and we did work in Hackathon and Bits and Bytes on the older thing, we are now in the process of refining and moving to the new procedures that we have listed out uh, in the documents. We have kept it aligned to what we have in 8283, as well as all the recent work that's been done in PSEP working group. And we hope that like, you know, this document can quickly be adopted. And this could be a solution for ECCC architecture. Thank you. So Drew, are you asking for both drafts? Yes. OK. Um, all right. So. I'll ask for room just before I do that. Can I just go back to here? Um, so tell me again, what is the S bit? Uh, PCCC uh, PCC SR. Okay, so if I if I support PCCC but not SR, then I set that to zero. Yes. And if I support PCCC and PCCC SR, I set that to one. Yeah. What if I just support PCCC SR? And not. Do we worry about it? Okay, I I think I can handle that. I'll change. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, I, I'll t maybe I think this is a historical thing because the way I had the messages being described in the previous document, yeah. uh, you were kind of dependent on those messages yeah. <laughs> to do SR. Now you are not, so I can change this. Okay. Yeah, I think they're independent. Yeah. If if unlikely. Yeah. Right. Um, okay. So and then that brings us to the question. So we have uh, now two drafts um, talking about the PCCC protocol extensions. One um, for what you might call regular basic mode, basic mode uh, one for segment routing mode. Uh, so I will ask separately. First, for basic mode, um, please raise your hand if you have read this draft. All right, that's good. That's about 12 people. So uh, plenty of people have read it. Um, please raise your hand if you would like to see that adopted into the PC working group. That's about the same. So 12 people, so that's good support. Um, and then the same question for the segment routing draft. Um, please raise your hand if you have read that. Okay, so it's about eight people. And please raise your hand if you would like to see that adopted into the PCE working group. It's the same, it's about eight people. Okay, um, so it looks like um, we have some reasonable support within the room. I think we, we can take that to the list for you. All right. Uh, thanks, Drew. So the next presenter is Cheng Li.
Hello, everyone. I'm Cheng Li from Huawei, Beijing. So my topic today is per segment in his app. So basically, we uh, uh, the motivation is uh, in several use cases such as uh, n chain one plus one, uh, like pulse protection, um, bidirectional pulse correlation, or like performance measurement. Like we need the abil ability to implement pulse like uh, identification in S S up networks, because you know, uh, especially in S R MPS networks, the the label will be pop up uh, hop by hop. So when the packets reach the egress node, the egress node cannot identify which the pulse the packet belongs to, right? So we propose the pulse segment in draft Cheng, uh, Spring MPRS pulse segment. And also similarly, we propose the SRV6 pulse ID in SRV6 network, so which, which defines a pulse ID to identify an uh, SRV6 pulse. So for configuring or allocating the, the pulse ID to an SR path. So extension in PSAP uh, is annotated, right? So so basically we we make several things such as uh, base uh, pulse ID allocation and conveying it with within uh, PSAP. And then the, the, the PC controlled ID space uh, advertisement and where the, the, the PCC should inform the, the PC the, the ID space that should be controlled by the PC. So based on the pass segment, the bidirectional pass correlation uh, extension is defined as well. So uh, uh, we propose three drafts. The first one is draft lease uh, PC as a pass segment, which uh, specifies extension to the PCF to support pass segment uh, uh, identifier allocation between the uh, PCF speakers. So the second one is the uh, PC SR uh, bidirectional pass. So in this draft, it dis defines the PCF extension to grouping two re re reverse uh, uni unidirectional uh, SR passes into associated bidirectional passes. So the last one is about the uh, uh, mechanism for uh, PCC to inform the uh, PC of the ID space and it's controlled by PCEP. So let's take a look at the first draft. In this draft, we specify a, a mechanism to carry the SR pass identification information in PCEP. So we support multiple multiple models uh, to uh, to allocate the uh, pass ID. For example, the pass ID can be allocated by the uh, ingress PCC itself and then inform to the uh, PC. So the PC sh should then inform the egress PCC, the, 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 the pulse identifier information. And then the, the next one is uh, the PCC could also uh, request the PC to allocate, it, to allocate a pulse ID. So in this case, the PC should uh, allocate and inform the assigned pulse ID to the ingress and the egress PCC using the PCEP messages. And the third one is that like the PC can allocate the pulse ID directly on its own account and inform the ingress and egress PCC. So, and we also uh, could like plan to uh, add some text to clarify, to describe the, the another mechanism, another mode of uh, allocating the pulse ID. In this uh, mode, the pulse ID can be allocated by the uh, the egress PCC. So the PC should request the the egress PCC to allocate an as uh, a pulse ID, and then it should inform the ingress and the egress PCC about the pulse ID allocation. So, so uh, so, uh, so for support supporting the the uh, pulse ID allocation. So we need some capability flags in uh, SRPC capability and SRV6 PC capability TLVs. So we basically define two uh, uh, flags. Uh, both the name are the same. We call it pass uh, pass identification bit. So it should be set. It should be set to uh, when we need to like. Require the pass ID. Uh, we we need to support the 
like it should be said when the P, P, uh, PSAP speak uh, support, which, uh, which supports the, the pass ID allocation. So for indicating pass ID uh, request, a P flag should be uh, like added in the RSP object as well. So uh, it, the P flag must be set in PC request and PC report message when the PCC request uh, the pass ID allocation. So uh, in a, it's, the, it's similar. So the, the, the P flags must be set in the PC report and PC update and PC initiate message when PC replied to the pass ID allocation requirement. Yep. So uh, for carrying the pass ID information, we create a new TLV called pass ID TLV in, in the RSP object. So several fields are defined. The first one is IDT, the ID type field, which defines the, the type of a pass ID. And zero means Ampere's pass uh, segment, which is a Ampere's label. And one means uh, SRV6 pass ID, which defined in the uh, drafts uh, lead spring passive uh, PM for SRV6 NP. So the flags, we, we currently we define uh, three flags, air flags for local global bit, C for PCC, PC, and E for egress and ingress. And pass ID field, which carries the, the, the value and the pass of the pass ID. So this, this field, uh, the, the pass ID type is like uh, indicated by the IDT, uh, IDT field, right? So uh, as, as we uh, introduced before, like the PC should inform the egress, the usage or the information of the pass ID allocation or the binding mapping information. So we use, we extend the procedures of uh, ID job PC, PCF extension, PC control SR by defining a new like FEC object to inform the pass identification information to the egress PCC. So one or more uh, foreign TLV are def uh, uh, divided uh, for 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 like uh, uh, describing the pass ID information, such as a symbolic pass name and RSP identifier and a speaker entity ID TRVs. So the pass information, pass ID information, can be encoded in this like uh, TRV so that the PC can inform the egress PCC by the FEC object and also the, the CCI uh, object. So this is an uh, easy example to uh, illustrate, uh, to, to introduce the PC uh, allocated pass ID mode on, on its own uh, code. So as we can see from the picture, so, uh, the PC could like maybe it can like uh, use the PC in initiate message to uh, in create uh, uh, to initiate a RCP an S RCP or or an SR pass with the pass ID allocation by the pass ID TLV within the RCP object, and then the ingress P PCC would report the uh, RCP or SR pass. Uh, installation if it is successful and it should report to the PC by the PC uh, report message with the D flag is set, right? So after the confirmation, the PC should like inform the egress PCC with the uh, PC initiate message uh, carrying the FE object equals to pass and a corresponding CCI object. So in this way, the, the egress PCC could understand and learn the uh, mapping information of the pass ID uh, and the, and the um, detailed pass information. So the second draft is about the uh, uh, bidirectional pass, bidirectional SR pass uh, association group extension in, in PSAP. So, um, so for associating two like as our passes, this document this defined a new association group called the the, the double side bidirectional SR pass association group. So 
with uh, within this association group, the SR process uh, uh, information can be like uh, described or, or conveyed by this uh, object. So a number of the double-sided bidirectional as a pass association group can take a, take the road of a, a forward or a reverse as a pass yep and if we need to like but request a, a bidirectional as a pass computation requires re request so the b flag in rp and srp objects must be set yep so uh for binding the these two SR passes, the pass ID TLV in the RSV objects must be carried to identify the SR pass. Yep. So this is this is the example example to uh, uh, describe the PC initiated by directional by directional pass. And in this example, we can see that the PC can like use the PC PC update or PC initiate message to install the bidirectional bidirectional paths uh, into the ingress and the egress pcc so yep the third one the third draft is about is about the uh, pc controlled id space uh, since we all know that uh, the id job pc pcf extension for pc controller and the the sr mode draft uh, specify the, the the procedure of uh, PC protocol extension for uh, for using the PC as an uh, central controller in SR networks or the the, the basic mode. Yep, but uh, in these two drafts, they assume that the label range to be used by the PC is known and set on both PC peers. So for solve this problem, we uh, specify specify the extension to support uh, advertisement of the various uh, ID space such as MPS label and pass ID, SRV6 pass ID uh, space to the PCE so that the PC can allocate the pass ID directly and dy dynamically. Yep. So this is the uh, procedure of how the PCC and the PC exchange the the ID uh, the PC controlled ID space. As we can see from the picture, like we need to in, uh, include the SR v6 pass ID control space or the label control space, which are defined in this document currently, in the open message to inform or exchange each other, like how. Uh, which range that the PC can be used actively? Yep. So this is the example, the, the, the format of the label control space TLV. As we can see that the flags, we only define on, well, one flag called A flag, means all space flag, uh, all space of the uh, ID space. And we maybe, we, we have like several, uh, uh, blocks of the ID space that can be used by the PC. So uh, this kind of information can be described by the blocks, uh, which uh, combining the of the stars and range information. So uh, this is the, the 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 format of the label control space TLV and the SRV6 bus ID space TLV is similar. So thank you. Any comments? Uh, just answer. So you've presented a number of drafts, I'll try to. Yeah. So in the bidirectional LSP draft, okay. mm -hmm. uh, you are only signaling associated LSPs, but not corrupted. Why? Sorry? You are not signaling corrupted. So associated means they yep. share head and, and tail end, but they don't necessarily go over the same nodes. When we did in PLSDP, corrupted seemed to be a very important requirement. Is there uh, a reason you are not? It's like corrupted, congruent. Co oh, you mean corrupted and associated? Yeah. Uh, actually, we 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 don't want to uh, mention about what is corrupted or associated. It can be corrupted or it can be associated. Whatever. If you have no means to request it, uh, mm -hmm. PC is not going to compute it. Uh, 
in current version, we did not solve this problem. Maybe it can be solved in the next version about the co-rooted, uh, like bidirectional paths or the associated. Yep, thank you. Uh, number two, so you're assuming that every device in the network has PCAP session with PC. Mm -hmm. So you're flooding, right? You mean this one? Uh, it's a generic question because as you start assigning path IDs, mm -hmm. which we potentially could use to match SR policies to, uh, to do some analytical analysis because there's no context. Uh, it means that you would have to push this information every device in the network. Is mm. that the intention? No, I suppose the post ID information should be lent by the ingress and the egress router or the PCC uh, only, because the post ID should, should not be like uh, inspected by the middle nodes. It should, this is how I increase my counters. Yeah, if you want to uh, make some like uh, middle nodes uh, accounting, it should be, but this would be discarded by the other drafts, like the the the, the main idea published uh, proposed in the spring. Yep. You are using PC as a message bus. It looks more and more like Kafka than. I mean, you are flooding information that has to be known by every device in domain. Doing through PC doesn't really scale. I don't think we need flooding. So if you want to do counting using pass ID, mm -hmm. which is the main application, mm -hmm. it has to be known on every device where a packet could potentially traverse through, because it would trigger increase in counter and some reporting back, right? So you wouldn't know in advance where your packet would go to. So meaning you will have to push this information on every device through this session. Uh, for now, we all we only push the information into the piece ingress and egress PCC. We don't like consider the the, the information. But this is a main application. I yeah, mean, yeah, it yeah, be yeah. The beauty of segment routing, we remove the state from the network, the ugly part, we remove the state from the network, right? Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, we, we can need to discuss think about this it. later. Yep. Let uh, Dhruv from Huawei, uh, answering to what Jeff was uh, saying. So uh, I agree that accounting is one of the use case, but in this document, as of now, we, were, we are not talking about it. Yeah. Uh, we are talking about just setting up a bi-directional LSP and note, noting the path ID allocated either by the ingress or by the PC to the egress. But I agree with you, when we do path accounting by this, this is a problem that we need to handle. Yes, and this exactly. is a generic problem for PCCC SR anyway, not just because of path ID. We are in uh, that boat uh, where we are using PCEP as an SBI, where we are talking to all the nodes. So this is something that we need to anyway handle. Yes, exactly. Thank you. So any comments? No, thank you. Um, but the last speaker is Daniele. Well, while we're waiting for Daniele to get to the front, uh, where are the blue sheets? Is anyone sitting on the blue sheets? Is anyone not signed the blue sheets? Please raise your hands. Okay, I think they'll they'll make their way forward, and then you can you can sign. Thank you. All right. Okay, so this is, um, uh, I would say, rather than an update, a, a revival of uh, uh, of the of a draft that we presented uh, a while ago. It was last presented in uh, uh, ITF ninety eight. It talks about uh, uh, PCAP extensions to uh, make uh, to, to to share awareness of uh, uh, of the fact that. Uh, LSPs belong <coughs> to a, um, a virtual network construct. Uh, why this? Because this is, uh, we will see in the next slides, uh, this is something that uh, makes uh, VN operations simpler. Uh, how do we do that? Uh, the idea is to use the association object. The association object uh, simply takes a number of LSPs 
and uh, it creates uh, uh, an association between them. We need uh, a new type uh, of, uh, uh, of association uh, to explicitly say that uh, this association means these LSPs belong to the same virtual network. There are also two new TLVs defi uh, defined uh, in, the, in the draft. Uh, one is the virtual network uh, TLV and another one uh, uh, to carry uh, vendor-specific uh, information. Changes uh, since uh, last version, uh, since uh, it was uh, four meetings ago, there are quite, uh, quite a lot of them. Uh, basically, the CTN framework changed a lot uh, and we tried to reflect the changes here. Also, the association group changed and we tried to keep the pace of that uh, uh, topic. Basically, uh, we, um, we changed the, the capability advertisement and the uh, procedures for dynamic association. Other things changed. <clears throat> Uh, basically, is uh, uh, the specification of the details uh, for uh, uh, the virtual network uh, uh, TLV and uh, the uh, IANA part, uh, which was uh, a little bit uh, uh, poor in the past. <clears throat> Rational for doing this work. Why do we need the uh, BN association? As I said, this is, uh, this is needed between the parent and the child PC to share information about uh, the virtual network a given LSP belongs to. Uh, does uh, the child PC needs uh, to be aware, need to be aware of uh, this information? Yes, in most cases, it's useful. Why? First of all, the child PC is uh, responsible for pair domain LSPs. And uh, sometimes also uh, the, um, the child PC of the ingress domain is responsible for the entire end-to-end -end path. Um, it is possible that in the same domain controlled by the same child PC, there are several LSPs be be belonging to the same virtual network and uh, uh, having a different uh, uh, ingress and egress nodes uh, within uh, within that uh, that domain. So why there is the need to have uh, this information? Optimization. Uh, it could be that uh, a, a request uh, against uh, the LSPs of a virtual network uh, is to uh, I don't know share as many resources as possible. So knowing that uh, the, those LSPs belong to the same virtual network allows. Uh, to do the path computation which maximizes the reusage of the same resources, or we need the diversity, maximizing the diversity and so on. Um, second thing is, uh, um, again, knowing that uh, different LSPs be belong to the same virtual network uh, allows uh, for relaxation of constraints. Sometimes uh, it's not possible within the same domain uh, to provide uh, uh, super strict uh, constraints that are requested to against the virtual network. Uh, the most common is uh, total diversity. It might be possible that uh, there's no way to accommodate such uh, such uh, such a requirement. Uh, knowing that uh, those LSPs belong to the virtual network, it's possible to relax uh, the constraint against the virtual network uh, and uh, maybe go for partial uh, partial diversity. I think uh, this is uh, basically a visualization of uh, what I said uh, so far. Probably the only addition is the fact that uh, um, local policies, which are usually implemented uh, within a single domain uh, or per LSP, can be can be applied at all the all the uh, L, um, LSPs uh, belonging to the same virtual network. Next steps. Uh, well, the document has been, uh, even if not presented, not discussed recently, has been uh, around for a while. It's pretty stable. Uh, I would say that the latest changes uh, significantly improved it. Uh, then there is the question whether, uh, so uh, giving for granted that, that this uh, uh, option uh, is, uh, is useful, 
which might not be the case. <laughs> Up to you to decide that. <laughs> uh, there are several ways of implementing it. The, the usage of the uh, association object seems to be the, the right approach. And that's it. Igor Burskin from Huawei. So the question is, uh, I understand what you're saying. It's it's a good idea, but maybe it, it could be done in a more generic way, basically to say that this is association with a particular mesh of LSPs or, or set of tunnels, uh, rather than to bind it uh, necessarily to the virtual network. There could be uh, applications wider than virtual network using measures of LSPs. For example, I do understand when you do, say, modification and you can uh, do make before break for entire mesh, right? So uh, this is a, a good association to use for resource sharing and uh, things, right? But... Well, yes, it, yours is a good point. Uh, um, I mean, uh, there are uh, uh, different uh, types of association already existing. Uh, this is just a new one, uh, which could be specific or generic. I mean, the, the way the association uh, is defined uh, is already generic in the sense that you are free to define uh, as many TLV, TLVs as you want. Uh, so, <coughs> well, what I'm trying to say is that, uh, say, in TS, when we are doing T-tunnel modeling, we are considering uh, things like T-tunnel sets. Right, so and the, we do not envision that this tier tunnel set would be only used, say, for virtual networks. Obviously. Okay, so uh, the T, uh, obviously all the tunnels that will belong to tier tunnel set will have uh, the association you're talking about. Yeah. What what I'm saying is that uh, you might need I don't know uh, association type 32 is for virtual networks, 33 is for I don't know any ty other type of uh, yes, uh, um, ways uh, you you can associate LSPs. Right. So I think you know Daniel, this is young. I think Ego is saying that this is it can be covering more, not just virtual network, but tunnel set. We can define another TLV for tunnel set, then we can broaden it. That, that, I think that will satisfy uh, Ego, right? That that was my my reply. Right. I'm yeah. sorry if it wasn't clear. Okay. Thanks. So, um, are you, you are you asking Daniele for an adoption at this point? As usual. As usual. Okay. okay. Have you ever seen a presentation not asking for last call uh, for adoption? I saw I saw one earlier this week. <laughs> um, okay. So I mean, we got some we got some good feedback from Eagle, but um, notwithstanding Eagle's feedback, um, I think. This trust's been around for a while. It's not the first time we've we talked about it. Uh, it looks like it, it, it solves um, a necessary part of ACTN. Uh, so I'd be fairly comfortable asking the question. Who, who in the room has read the draft? Got about 12 people again. And um, who in the room thinks that this document is a good basis for adoption? Few fewer, maybe 10. Okay. So um, I'd like to keep talking with um, uh, Eagle, for example, to, to address his comments. If you can do that on the list, that would be good. Um, meanwhile, I'll talk to my co-chair about doing a poll. All right. And that was the end. So uh, thanks for coming, and we'll see you again in Bangkok. I think one thing may be useful.
Parece igual. 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 Parece ig